It's really spectacular to have you here. And uh, so many people have been watching your amazing energy and healing ideas, which is non-standard. And I'm just curious about one is, why did you go into medicine in the first place? And what inspires you every day to sort of buck the system? Yeah, I, honestly, both answers have to do with my family. So why I went into medicine, I mean, it's vanilla, but it was the family business. I grew up in a family of physicians. Both my mm -hmm. parents are not only MDs, but MD, PhD, so academic physicians. My brother is in medicine. My sister is in medicine. We're all in medicine. So it's one of those things that it was just, I always love science. I truly love biology. And I had this very utopic, if that's even a word, thinking of utopia, but this, this ideal of medicine as this is a place that I can explore the biological realm. I can explore my curiosity as I can explore nature through human physiology and help people. How amazing does that sound? So that's the picture I had of medicine in my head. Now, as anybody who's actually gone into clinical medicine knows that the ideal doesn't match reality. So my life kind of took a tangent as I was going through my graduate level training. So as I was finishing up college, um, I went to Dartmouth College, majored in cell biology and biochem. As I was finishing up there, I uh, had a, a a fellowship, a scholarship to go to Oxford to do a PhD, mm -hmm. um, which gave me a little bit of time before starting med school. So I had a place at Harvard Medical School and shit hit the fan, so to speak, actually literally because um, I started to develop really bad gastrointestinal distress. And it wasn't your run of the mill, like IBS, my tummy hurts. It was inflammatory bowel disease, in my case, ulcerative colitis. So to give pe people a picture of what that is, because I know acronyms get confusing, IBS, IBD, they kind of meld together, but for me, it was like bloody diarrhea, uncontrollable, 12, 20 times a day. So coming from a place of being you know, a high-performing academic and athlete to having my academic life, my physical life as an athlete and my social life, my mental health, all more corrupted is the right word, like obliterated by this condition. I mean, sobering, humbling, despair-inducing, choose your word. It was really a life moment for me. Now, you know, I'll cut through the gory details. Obviously, I'm here and I'm fine. And the way I got here was through a path of desperation, experimentation, self experimentation with things that were unconventional, even though I had a very conventional mindset, it doesn't matter how you've been trained, when you become desperate enough, you'll try anything. And so I stumbled upon, you know, trying a ketogenic diet, you know, we can talk about how I got there. But long story short is to my surprise, it worked. Mm -hmm. I went into remission and I'm talking about biomarkers clinically and on biopsy. So it was a complete life reversal, a health reversal. And this happened during my PhD studies and before I started at medical school, but I already had the place to start at medical school. So that really was sobering and it framed how I then went into my training. So when you have a personal experience like that, you ask different questions, you see things differently. And so as I went through finishing up my PhD, then my four years at Harvard Med, I just saw the world through that lens. I saw the world through the, the perspective of a suffering chronic disease patient. And seeing the world through that lens, irrespective of, you know, the, the high regard I hold physicians in, and I do, I... I couldn't not see the huge dysfunctions in the system and the fact that the system is not serving our needs. And so that led me to really, I think, ask the hard questions, which also brings me back to my family because I always grew up asking questions. I was always curious, like I said, and I thought I could explore that in, in like medicine and science. Turns out when you ask the wrong questions, you get in trouble. But my dad always taught me, stay curious. If you ask a question and you don't get a good answer, keep asking the question. And if people don't give you a good answer and they get angry at you for asking the question, it probably means you're asking a great question. It's a little bit of a troublemaker in and of himself, but that's really what drew me to where I am now. I had a personal experience. I've always been curious. I see healthcare as a place where we should be able to capitalize on curiosity for the betterment of human health. That's not actually the case, but that's not going to stop me from asking the questions that I think we need to ask to get the answers that we need and change the system in a way that we need to do in order to address this metabolic health epidemic. I'm sure I don't need to uh, tell your audience about that. So you obviously have a family history of medicine, MD, PhD, mm -hmm. and much uh, standard 
practice of medicine because most of us came from that. What are you finding what's wrong with standard medicine? Or That's is there something question. wrong with standard medicine? So I like, I like the way you asked the second part of the question. I would say modern medicine is great at what it's built for. It's built for acute care. You need a liver transplant. You're bleeding out. You know, you need chemotherapy or you need to get like a rare cancer treated. The American healthcare system is pretty darn good. But if you're dealing with a chronic metabolic disease, the system is not built for that. It's not that it's even failing. It's that it wasn't built for that in the first place. The incentive structures that are built are not geared towards what are the patient's needs. It is built as a business. And so the incentive structures, and this is what I think the big problem is, focus the scope of medicine and care in directions that are guided by the business, the economics. And that doesn't mean there's any conspiracy theory. It doesn't mean that hospitals or big pharma is evil. It's the system we built. And I think just acknowledging that framework helps us understand why things aren't shifting to treat people's needs because we don't have a system that is built for preventative care. The incentive structures aren't built up to use metabolic health interventions to help address obesity, diabetes, mental health disorders. And another layer I will add with respect to this is, you know, how the research is done and how certain things become standard of care. So let me elaborate. In order for something to become standard of care, it needs to check certain boxes on the hierarchy of evidence. It's kind of like imagine pyramid, how certain levels of evidence are considered better than others. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Now, certain studies are just more, expen and more expensive and technically harder to conduct. So if you want to do a double blinded, randomized placebo clinical trial, that's expensive. It requires a lot of investment and it's difficult to conduct. Now, if there's a business model wrapped around that, because you're going to get a drug that you can sell, pharma will pay for it because they're going to make money, not because they're evil. This is capitalism. It actually incentivizes them to innovate in a way. It's a good thing, but take that framework now and ask the question, well, who's going to pay for the $10 million randomized control trial, comparing a carnivore diet to a vegan diet for inflammatory bowel disease? Who makes money? That study has never been done. And so even if either of those diets, I have my own guesses, but even if either of those diets was like the most effective thing in the universe for Crohn's and colitis, inflammatory bowel disease, if the study hasn't been done, it can't be recommended as standard of care. So I use that example in particular because I was shocked when I went keto and my inflammatory bowel disease went into complete remission. I was stunned because I grew up in a conventional mindset and I'm like, but I can't point to any evidence-based RCT to say this will work. And that's the problem. The problem is the most effective interventions aren't necessarily the ones that are being recommended. The ones that are being recommended are the ones that have had the check boxes put next to them because there's a business model and incentive structure to do these studies. So that's the mismatch. Is there science that has been randomized in the medical system and the doctors recommending a plant-based diet? I mean, plant-based diets aren't my area of expertise. Well, but well yes, Mediterranean diet yeah. is in a general, plant like, diet. Did we come up with our recommendations? And can the doctors you're working with or have worked with cite you the studies of why they recommend the diets and the information they recommend to the patients? Okay, so th that's a slightly different question. So are there RCTs on plant-based diets? Yes, there are also RCTs on keto and in and, and most diets. The question of can healthcare workers that are recommending these diets cite and you know have in-depth conversation on the literature? From my experience, no. I won't name individuals, but I will say like, you know, I took electives in nutrition where I went to medical school and I asked questions during these electives about the studies being presented and I was not impressed by the presenter's understanding of the methodology and the yeah. studies they were presenting or, you know, the rationale behind the guidelines that were being proposed. And I do think that's a problem. I think a lot of the times what we do is we hand out platitudes that sound nice, but are entirely empty. Think about eat a balanced diet. What the heck does that even mean? It's a platitude. It's a hand wavy statement. And, you know, 
it allows us to defer responsibility on to the patient, the person trying to like live and solve the problem, rather than actually giving useful physiology first, metabolism centric advice. So the long and an short answer to your question is no, I don't think people generally recommending standard dietary approaches know the literature as a generalization. Of course, there are exceptions. And I'm wondering, I, I guess recently I was just discussing an idea. The leading cause of all disease is actually doctor recommended advice, which is, uh, which, I don't know uh, that. Well, 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 I'm just, I, I okay. get, I'm just telling you from my experience and your experience with IBS, mine with that, and also kidney stones and bowel bleeding and many other things. Never did anyone ask me what I ate, and it was always a Mediterranean diet and or diet doesn't matter. Yet when I went keto, I got better and carnivore went away. And now I ask the question to all of us, if the advice we're giving isn't working, why are we so resistant to even try something different? 